Well, hello, boys and girls. It's when we feel like it o'clock. At least it's when I feel like it. It better be when you feel like it. Why would you be watching this when you don't feel like it? I don't know. Which you always will be feeling like it because we're Pearls of Wisdom Show, the Pearl of Wisdom Show. That's why. And uh, this is Bee Pal Picks Edition. You can go to uh, BPAL Picks in the uh, Patreon there. I'll give you the link down in the bottom. Comment in the bottom, and I will send you the link. Sign yourself up, and you can get free. You'll get free for the rest of the month. Actually, this is the last week of the month, so you'll get free for the rest of this month, and um, possibly next month. And then if you win the pay, get this, you get free this month. You'll get free next month. It's the best time to get in because you get five weeks. It's the only time you're going to get five weeks. And if you win the parlay challenge, I haven't seen your parlays down there, boys and girls, too much. Put three pick parlays or whatever parlays. It doesn't even have to be a three pick parlay. You can put a two pick parlay. Put them down there. If whoever's leading at the end of the month will get a free month. So you could right now get two months and one week free of premium BPAL picks just by putting your parlay down there or commenting everything and then when you when you're done with that you can just say screw you I don't want you anymore so I don't, it doesn't cost you a darn time and if when you're over there we have a parlay challenge over there and if you win that you get another one you could just keep this going forever Okay, I just want to have you over there. The weekend, the weekend, I had, it was like totally up and down. I think I'm down two units over the weekend, which is, I think, my second losing weekend since hockey started. Most weekends I'm way up, but um, what messed me up, I'm not going to go through all the games because there's just too many to go through. The one, okay, uh, the one I really screwed up on was the Boston Philly outdoor game. I thought the ice was going to be still not great. Usually All Star or not? Did I say All Star? Outdoor game. Did I say outdoor? Okay, outdoor game. <laughs> Hernandez. Did I say outdoor? Oh yes. Okay. Hernandez is the pearlocopter that sends brings you your pearls of wisdom necklaces when you subscribe to the channel. You know Hernandez. Yeah, in the pearlocopter. He's a pearlocopter driver. Anyways, you yeah, know, no, that's enough for now. Just thank you. That's great. Okay. Um, I said I had the under on that all day. And then I got watching the game. And I do my due diligence, boys and girls. I study this quite a bit. Somehow, I missed that they were going to be playing their defenseman, who normally doesn't even play, Friedman, on the wing, they were so short. I didn't realize they were that short. Wow, Philadelphia that is. And uh, in which case I would have had Boston all day in regulation and all of that stuff like that. But that's my own fault. Didn't do enough due diligence and uh, that's what happens. So um, yeah, that's so that that was a really bad one for me. I had a really the really good one was I had the Anaheim Minnesota game way under and Minnesota in reg and those were Max Pearl plays. So it was just up and down. Right now I have Vancouver Vancouver over Winnipeg ML on a unit and two units on the under and Vancouver's winning two nothing versus Winnipeg. So, you know, good, bad I am finding this uh, very difficult season to cap, but I'm getting better and better and learning all the time. Let's get to our picks tomorrow, or yeah, tomorrow, which is could be today for you, unless you're watching it tonight. But on what's the date? How would I just give you the date? How's that? The 22nd. It's the 21st now. Doing the 22nd picks right now. I am going to the Spanking and Perlo's House of Spanking tomorrow, though, because losing money over a weekend, even if it's only a unit or two, is spank worthy. And then you'll see, I'll get all leveled out. Perlo's House of Spanking, it's the best there, I said it. Go, if, you live, if you're in the Edmonton, Alberta area, 
and you find yourself needing a spanky, that's the place to go. Okay, you can go to the others, but nobody does it better. Let's go to, that's not where we want to go. This is where we want to go. Do we want to go to the picks? Where's the picks? Picks, here, it's the picks. Okay, first one, Calgary, Toronto. I cannot take to go against Toronto after their shellac in the Montreal the last game. They're at home. Um, they Have they been playing a lot? Yeah, it doesn't seem to matter. It doesn't seem to be a matter. In fact, I think they. this is even more stupid than I thought. Toronto, by the way, this is a weekly uh, daily face-off uh, shows you the schedule for everybody. Daily face off. It's the best there. I said it. One, two, three, four. Four games in six nights. This will be five games in seven nights. And let me tell you right now, that should be the end of it for any team. That team, any team playing five games in seven nights, should not be winning games. But it doesn't seem to matter with Toronto. Uh, Calgary, they have some internal problems. Um, might as well go see what they're doing. How much have they played? Calgary. Oh, you know what? Oh, look at that. Perfect. They're playing six games in four nights, too. So they're going to be relatively tired. Plus, they're playing three games in four. Uh, the reason why I say that is I'm going over here because tomorrow is the day. This is the last week. They played again back-to-back back back against the Oilers, had a day off, went home, and now, or did they go to Toronto? Is this in Toronto? Let me see. This is in Toronto. They're flying all the way to Toronto. Okay, Toronto's going to win that game for sure. Toronto and Reg pays two, somewhere around there. They'll have Anderson in. Uh, yeah, taking Toronto in reg. Dallas versus Florida. I don't know what to do with this. Another five games and seven nights for Florida. Uh, you know, last year, any team played five games and seven nights. It doesn't matter who they're playing. You do not bet that team. This year has been totally voodoo. It doesn't seem to matter. Uh... Dallas, on the other hand, has not played four seven nights. So you would say, well, then Dallas should be super rested and should be able to destroy Florida. There is that, but also they're going to be super rusty. If, you ever, if you've noticed so far this year, teams that have had to go because of COVID-related issues or uh, had to play against teams and they had COVID-related issues and went on long layoffs, the next game they come back they're usually not all that successful so I went back and forth on this one you can't take the PL you can't take the spread on Dallas because you're not getting anywhere near enough they're giving Dallas mind like plus one and a half for Florida like that doesn't even make sense how is Florida the favorite let me look at that again how is Florida the favorite on the money line but getting plus money on the spread, I don't know. But I'm almost thinking your best bet here is take Florida, probably because they played five games in seven nights. Take Florida on, if they're going to give you the one and a half and put it in a parlay. Because the real play on here probably is the under. A tired team against a rusty team should equal under. That's two... Team, one team that doesn't have the energy to get enough, uh, get into the right spaces to score, that being Florida, and a Dallas team that are probably going to have difficult time passing and stuff like that. This should be an under five and a half. That would probably be my play here there more than anything. Tampa Bay versus Carolina. Carolina is rolling, but again, another team that's playing five games in seven nights. Carolina, but they just and they just play Tampa Bay and ruin them. Look at one, they were on four games and six nights when they last played Tampa Bay. Now they're going to be on five games and seven nights playing against Tampa Bay. 
I know Tampa Bay is a little weaker of a team right now because they have some significant injuries. Uh, this is what it's made a tough cap in this year. Sorelli is out. Of course, we've always known Kucherov is out. And for Carolina, I think they're fairly healthy. Go down here. Teravina note. And uh, Tampa Bay should be the more, should be, yeah, look, Tampa Bay should be rested. In theory, the way it should be is Tampa Bay had a bit of a layoff. They had four and they lost to Tampa Bay. That layoff could have something to do with that. They got their legs moving here. Tampa Bay should be the winner here. And depending on, because Carolina is a little tired, depending on who they put in, if they put Reimer in, I'm going to lean the over here. Nadelkovich has been playing very well. They may go back to him. In which case, I may go the under. And what is the total on this? Six. It seems like the score. It seems like the score. Uh, Tampa Bay has been having tough, tough trouble scoring lately. I'm going to go the under. But as you can tell, I'm not like super thrilled about the total on this game. Islanders versus Buffalo. Now this is really, Buffalo just had a great game against New Jersey. And uh, I saw an energy in them I haven't seen for a very long time and I'm very concerned about this game. I think I like the spread of 153 for Buffalo here, plus one and a half. Here's why. I like that when, when I see a team that has energy like they had against New Jersey, and what I mean by energy is positive, loose, confident energy. I haven't seen that in a Buffalo in a long time. And playing against a team like the Islanders, who generally play things slow scoring, and this year not so much, it hasn't been the same Islanders we've seen for a while, but um, low scoring. I'm still going to go under five and a half here. But I think Buffalo could actually win this game. And uh, at least keep it to one goal. It feels like a one goal game to me. And I think on the, the Islanders on the ML is getting you what? Only 165. So you might as well take 158 and have a higher percentage play. I think it's the highest percentage play for the most money. I don't feel comfortable in Islanders winning this game necessarily. If you want to really risk it, I think it's almost a coin flip that Buffalo wins this at 240. If you like to gamble, you know, if you're a long term investor, in which is what you should be when you're gambling. You probably take Buffalo at 240 here because it's going to, in the long term, a coin flip game like this that is going to pay you out more in the long term. And that's really the way we should be looking at our betting. Um, Los Angeles, St. Louis. I'm taking LA all day at 261 here. St. Louis's energy, we were talking about energy, is horrible right now. I don't know what's going on with that team. Uh, they have uh, they have a few significant injuries. Um, I'll quickly look them up. Very significant, actually. Pareko. Look at Colton Pareko, Jaden Schwartz, Blay. I mean, some of these aren't what you would call significant, but you still have to bring in players that are normally not in the lineup. And they've been, some of these injuries have been a while, quite a while. So they have players playing higher up in the lineup than they should. Um, and they have players playing that are just not as good. Pareko is very, is very, is an integral part of this team. Pareko is the reason why Peter Angelo was, they would lean towards letting Peter Angelo go because Pareko to them could fill the hole of his leadership and all that. And now they're both out. 
LA, on the other hand, has been playing absolutely fantastic. Uh, the uh, the bookies here are not keeping up to the play of the Los Angeles Kings as of late here. I like LA Kings here. I would take them. If you want to be really sure, do the spread. You're still getting 159. Put it in a parlay or what have you. But I'm taking them ML. I like a money line here. It's my big play. As far as the total, I'm going to go the over here. St. Louis has been not been very stingy this year on defense. LA has been scoring a lot, especially on the power play. Uh, this seems like an over game. I don't know if they're going to go with Quick or Peterson in net. We don't know. This is the thing, okay? When we're doing these, uh, this is this is I use this. You, there's other ones as well, but this usually is the fastest one I find. For you can find it in the same one I do for my weekly challenge. Left wing lock. What do they project here? Um, St. Louis. They project quick and Bennington, but I don't. I don't think. I, I. I think they should roll back to Peterson. If they go back to quick, I definitely like the over here. If it's Peterson, I'm not so heavy on the over. So maybe smaller money on the over. At, uh, that's five and a half, right? Yeah, for sure. I like that over. Um, Anaheim versus Arizona. I, the under is five. And I probably bet it if I'm going to bet an under. But I'm betting Arizona ML here. Maybe even in reg. Anaheim just has too many significant injuries on their defense. And since they have to be a defensive team... That's not a good combination. They have to be a defensive team because they don't have much for offense at all. Um, and uh, Arizona has had more offense than we thought to start this, so far this season. So I think they could score a couple. I don't know. It's possible that with um, Kemper in net and likely Gibson in net, Arizona's going to have a tough time scoring. This is the problem. No Lindholm, no Manson. Um, that will make it easier for Arizona to score because they are going to be playing players, again, higher up the lineup. They've had Mahura playing, uh, who hasn't played in a long time. So I think Arizona probably wins this 3 4 nothing. You could almost PL it. I, don't, I think Anaheim's in big trouble here. I, feel, I find it highly unlikely that Anaheim can win this game. Vegas versus Colorado. I'm taking Colorado all year, honestly, regardless of who they're playing, depending on maybe like if they're playing five games in seven or something like that. But this team is just rock solid. Now, they do have injuries, um, but they have, they have so much depth. I just don't – watching them, it doesn't seem to matter. Oh, look at that. Their injuries have come back. McCarr was injured. He's back. Forget about it. Uh, Vegas is a solid team. And Colorado is just making them look bad, especially up the middle with McKinnon and uh, Kadri and um, with uh, um, Vegas – they they can't they don't really have much Carlson to uh, Carlson's not going to really help out much up the middle for them against a Colorado team that's so strong like this and um, that's really the thing here Vegas Colorado is just way too strong up the middle they're equal to them on the wings and their defense is just insane they're just an insane team and I don't think they're going to lose too many times. Uh, throughout the regular season now. So at 186, if you can go to opening, these guys give you some darn good odds sometimes. Uh, even 180 on the ML here, it's you got you got to do it. At home, you got to do it. Minnesota versus San Jose. Very interesting game. San Jose um, has really played well since Carlson has been out of the lineup. And... Um, but they're playing some guys now, like Malosh, that have not played in the NHL for this extended amount of time. Minnesota is a high-energy team. 
Um, it's saying that Talbot might be in net here. If that is the case, I really like Minnesota. Um, what's the spread here? What did I put down for the spread? I think over 55.5. I, I think you got to go with the over in San Jose most of the time, simply because they, they have no choice but to play a highly offensive game. Uh, Minnesota plays high energy. They do kind of have a team that can beat you anyway. Um, now, the question with this game will be, how many people has Minnesota got back? They're out Marcus Johansson. That's not that big of a deal. Yeah, their lineup is fairly solid here. I, I'm going to take Minnesota. Um, I don't think we're getting very good juice on that. Money line one sixty seven. That's okay. The energy, the the energy the San Jose has had it. That's taking. They're taking from St. Louis. I'm not sure I want to go Minnesota in reg here. But if you like to gamble a little bit, it's not a bad play. If you like to keep that juice up, we'll go. But we're just going to go on the ML here. Well, boys and girls, that's our full. 42%. People have asked me, what does 42% mean? What do you mean by that? Well, you know, in hockey where they say, we're going to give our full 110% or whatever, and uh, all of that. Well, I've only got 42%. So, but the 42% I have, I give it all to you because you are my favorites. Don't tell everyone else, okay? But you are my favorites. I don't say this often. Don't just say this all willy-nilly. I love that, willy-nilly. Remember that term? We should bring that back. That willy-nilly and Chesterfields, if you know what those are. Tell me in the comment section if you know what those are. Also, comment your parlays. Comment and I'll give you a free month. But I really want to know if you know what the term willy-nilly means and uh, Chesterfield. And don't get get yourself down to the Perlow's House of Spanky. It'll do you good. Have a great day, everybody. Lots of love to ya. Okay. Bye.